today i will be focusing the lecture on some other topic but related to the beam that is gantry girder as we know gantry girder from the name itself we understand the girder is a beam so it's a type of beam and it is a type of beam where the span is laterally unsupported so when we are going to discuss about this gantry girder we will see that the gantry girder as it is laterally unsupported so the bending stress due to compression has to calculate in that way in fact in our previous lectures we have shown the theory how to calculate the bending stress in compression for such type of beams but gantry girder has additional things that is it is not a symmetrical beam so because of asymmetry we have to find out the uh, bending stress in compression through that formula which is means we cannot find out directly from the is code so here we will demonstrate how to find out a means uh, the bending stress in compression for unsupported length with asymmetrical section now what is the use of gantry girders gantry girders are basically used for carrying the moving load means to carry a heavy load in industrial building we need to set up gantry girder along with the crane system so how to design and what are the aspects of design procedures those things we will discuss here the difference you will get is that one is the due to moving load because of moving load uh, what will be the maximum bending moment and shear force of the on the gantry girder for a particular position of moving load so as you know for different positions of moving load the bending moment and shear force on the gantry girder will be different so we have to find out the worst condition that means the position at which maximum bending moment will occur and the position at which maximum shear force will occur and at that position what will be the maximum magnitude of bending moment and shear force that we will calculate and on that basis we have to select the section and we have to check the stresses so in that way we have to do this is the basic difference means in terms of calculation of load another thing is as it is moving so impact load will come means we have to add some load in terms of um, means some additional load we have to add in terms of percentage of total load uh, because of this moving load for impact so that also codal provision has been given for what type of load how much uh, additional load will be providing those things has been given in the code so what are the codal provisions has been given again code has defined some deflection how much deflection we can allow for this gantry girder so all these things we will be discussing in this lecture so first let us see what are the uh, components are available in this crane system say components of crane system so if we see one major um, component is the cross girder cross girder or crane bridge you can say which is will be a stress like structure second is gantry girder which we will try to design today gantry girder then crane runway or this is called rail also and another component is trolley through which the load is passed trolley or crab to mounted on crane bridge so these are the major four components we have in a crane system now uh, if i draw the big, uh, diagram then it will be clear how it works say first let me draw the 
top view of the crane system. So, in top view from top if we see, we will see that there is two I sections are means two columns are there, maybe this is I section or some built up section whatever it is. So, these are two I, I section on which the girder is placed, gantry girder is placed and on gantry girder means gantry girder on gantry girder the crane bridge is there means crane bridge is supported on the gantry girder in one side means in one means in both side right. So, if I cut there now this is what the trolley is going to move this is trolley or we can say crab this is column which support the gantry girder column or we can say stanchion yes. and this is the crane bridge through which this is going to move this trolley is going to move and because of this movement we will see that the maximum means bending movement and shear force is developing here and that we have to calculate this is the gantry girder right. So, this is the top view of cranes crane systems. So, this is how it uh, arrangements are made like this. Now, it will be much more clear if I show the front view. Say this is the column this column may be a single section or may be a built up section as per the requirement we have to make. Now, here some packing is provided this is called packing and this is bracket on which the gantry girder is kept this is stanchion or column we can say. Now, this also we can make as a step column by the use of step column also we can make it after this we have the gantry girder is generally placed right. So, this is the gantry girder and then may be channel section or some other section as per the requirement we can provide then then we will provide the rail right this is called rail and this is gantry girder now the crane bridge will be placed like this this is the crane bridge which will be a truss like system means these are kept like this and here a trolley will be put right this is trolley right and this will be made here like this right. So, and from trolley 
if I see this just I am giving a big one just to show now the load will be here this is called hook where the load will be placed means load will be moved right. So, this is the front view front view and means to show the component of crane systems right this is the column. So, this is how the gantry gutter is placed and this gantry gutter we have to design right. So, gantry gutter is placed on column means by the use of bracket and uh, it may be placed directly or with uh, some packing material it depends on what type of things we are going to use. Then the crane is made means is kept on gantry gutter. Now, when this load is going to move, when this trolley is going to move to carry the load moving load, then the load is coming means here and bending moment is coming. So, we have to find out what will be the uh, maximum bending moment and maximum shear force or reaction at the gantry gutter so that we can design accordingly right. So, another uh, means this can be this column can be also made like this means some stepped column we can use also say this is like this right. So, this is a step column. So, after this we can make some packing and then we can make gantry gutter right. So, in this way also we can make either we can use such type of column or we can use the bracket so that gantry gutter can be placed. So, in short what we can say that the gantry gutters are examples of laterally unsupported beam in industrial buildings right. Laterally unsupported means only it is supported at, at the end by the two column. These are provided in almost all the industrial building for lifting and transportation of heavy loads. So, for lifting and transportation of heavy load this type of gantry gutter are used. The gantry gutter is subjected to rolling loads in the form of two concentrate lo wheel loads spaced at a fixed distance. As you know because of this means wheel is going to move. So, means this trolley is going to move right. So, the concentrate load whatever it is coming because of this. So, it is giving reaction at at a fixed distance where this is called base of the means base distance of the wheel right which is called b small b we used to give it term as small b and weight is w. So, w is if total weight w then that is coming through this and this wheel load right. So, in that way we will see two concentrated load at a fixed distance is coming into picture which has to be met. Now, a crane system with trolley cross gutter and gantry gutter is shown already right. Now, I will show some different shapes of gantry gutter how it look like right say suppose different shapes can be used as per the requirement I am just showing one or two say this is one I section we can use other sections also we can use built up section also then maybe we can make from here say directly we are providing. right so in this way we can sorry we can make connections so this is one type of 
you can trigger our use. Another is with the use of channel. So, this is an I section. Right. Then we can use some channel. Then we can put another I section here. Right. And then we can use some packer here. then we can tie it through this right so this is packer okay. so these are some means different shapes of gantry girder as i told that we can use other type of shapes also including the built up sections as per the requirement of the design right so now i'll go through some codal provisions which will be required for designing of gantry gutters so what are the major criteria for designing a gantry gutter let us discuss first is the gantry gutters are laterally unsupported except at the column so this we have to remember and then accordingly we can design the gantry girder. That means, the bending stress in compression will be different, it will not be equal to 0.66 Fy. So, this is one thing we have to remember. Another thing is the deflection of gantry girder under dead load and live load should not exceed the values as per clause this 3.1 of IS 800. In IS code, IS 800 1964, uh, sorry 1984, the deflection criteria has been given, means maximum deflection, how much it will be allowable for gantry girders, this has been specified there. So, that has to be followed, right. Because of lateral thrust, the gantry girder are subjected to asymmetric bending. So, because of the presence of lateral thrust, we have to design the gantry girder due to asymmetric bending right the gantry girders are subjected to impact and longitudinal loads due to the movement and stoppage of crane the additional values of these loads are to be taken as per is 875 and are given below so i am showing the additional load how to means how much we should take for different case of uh, cranes, crane crane uh, so, I will show which was given in IS 875, right. So, what are those? Here we have, we are seeing the table which is given in IS 875, in IS 875. So, type of load means additional load will be added which is depending on type of load. One is vertical load. For vertical load, if it is electric overhead cranes, then we have to add 25 percent of the maximum static load right so for electric overhead cranes 25 percent of the total static load has to be added that means total load will become 1.25 of the static load and for hand operated cranes this additional load will be 10 percent of the maximum static load for hand operated cranes right and for horizontal forces transverse to rails if it happens then for electric overhead it will be 10 percent for electric overhead cranes this will become 10 percent of the weight of graph and the weight lifted by the crane so horizontal forces transverse to rails for electric overhead cranes will be 10 percent of the weight of graph and the weight lifted by the crane. So, this will be additional load and for hand operated cranes this will be also 10 percent of the weight of the crab and the weight lifted by the crane. So, for horizontal load 
this is same. That means, whether it is electric overhead cranes or hand operated cranes, we will take 10 percent of the weight of the crab and the weight lifted by the crane that we will take. And horizontal forces along rail for that we will add 5 percent of the static wheel load. 5 percent of the static wheel load will be added. Now, permissible deflection, the maximum vertical deflection under dead load and live load shall not exceed the follows. This is given as I was telling that in clause 3.13.1.3 of IS 81984. In this clause, it has been defined that is maximum vertical deflection under dead load and live load. Right. When manually operated cranes are used and for similar loads, the permissible deflection will be L by 500, L is the span. So, L by 500 it will be. And when electric overhead travelling cranes are operated and with having up to 50 ton, this will be, this permissible deflection will be L by 750 permissible deflection will be L by 750. Right? Other case let us see, where electric overhead travelling cranes operated over 50 ton, then the letter, the vertical deflection will be restricted to L by 1000, L by 1000. So, deflection we have to restrict less, means we, uh, permissible deflection will be less L by 1000 and other moving loads such as charging cars etcetera in this case the permissible deflection will be L by 600, where L is the span of crane runway gutter, L is the span of crane runway gutter. So, in this way the deflection means maximum defl permissible deflection can be found from the code and when we are going to calculate the actual deflection we have to check whether the actual deflection is exceeding the permissible deflection as per code or not. If it is exceeding, then we have to redesign. So, in this way we have to check, this is one factor which we have to remember for designing of gantry gutter. Now, another aspect is the stress criteria, permissible stress. What will be the permissible stresses for different cases? Let us see. So, as we know, the allowable bending compressive stress for bending in horizontal plane will be taken sigma b c is equal to 0.66 f y. So, when horizontal load is taken means and because of horizontal load uh, the bending moment is developing and the stress is developing in that case sigma b c will become simply 0.66 f y that is equal to sigma b t also. So, sigma b t and sigma b c will be 0 0.66 fy when when the load is in horizontal direction. That means, the bending moment when it is developing due to the horizontal load. So, in that case we will take permissible bending stress in compression and in tension equal to 0 0.66 fy. Right? Now, allowable bending compressive stress for bending in vertical plane is determined on the basis of critical stress F C B. So, the, uh, because it is unsupported. So, in that way we have to calculate applicable for bending of beams having no lateral restraint. Right? So, this sigma B C one is sigma B C H means horizontal and another is sigma B C V. So, this is okay, this is we can take 0.66 F Y, but for this the permissible bending stress in compression due to vertical load that has to be calculated through the formula which we have shown earlier. Right? Now, according to clause 3.9.3, .3, the allowable stress in axial tension, axial compression, bending stress and allowable stresses in rivet may be increased by 10 percent for the design of gantry gutter. 
for the combination of the vertical and horizontal forces. That means, when we are combining the vertical and horizontal forces, means when we are combining the stresses due to vertical and horizontal forces, in that case the allowable stresses will be simply 10 percent more. That means, whatever the allowable stresses we are going to calculate we have, that will increase 10 percent more when we are combining the horizontal and vertical load for calculating stresses. That means, stresses due to horizontal load and stress due to vertical load. That stress may be tensile compression or axial tensile oxygen whatever may be. So, when we are summing up these stresses, similar stresses due to vertical load and due to horizontal load, then the permissible load when we are going to check permissible stress will be 10 percent more than the allowable stress whatever we calculated right. Next is in clause 3.9.4 in next clause it is told that there is no increase in the permissible stress where wind load is the main load acting on the structure. So, when wind load will play major role in that case we will not increase the permissible stress by 10 percent. So, in that case permissible stress will be same as we have calculated I mean actually. So, there is no scope of increasing in case of wind load when it is playing the major role right. So, these are the aspects which we have to remember. Now, I will discuss about the design procedures. So, in step 1 what we will do? that calculate the maximum vertical load right. Vertical load means what are the vertical loads? One is weight of trolley or crab right. Then the weight of crane girders and then self weight of girder and rails. These are the three loads majorly it is coming as vertical load. Weight of trolley which we are giving name as WT weight of crane girder WC and self weight of girder and rails right. And the load to the gantry girder will be maximum when trolley wheels are closest to the girder right. Because when this trolley is moving like this, so say trolley is moving like this right. So, when this will be in this position means closest position then the maximum reaction force will happen here. So, maximum load on gantry girder will be when it will be the when trolley will be at the closest position means trolley wheel will be closest position right. So, the load transfer to the gantry girder can be calculated from the formula that is W t into B minus A by 2 B, where B is the distance between gantry girders, B is the distance between gantry girders. Say suppose there is one gantry girder here, another gantry girder here. So, this is B right. Now, if trolley is like this means if it is provided like this then this will be A. A is the distance between C G of girder and trolley right. Distance between C G of girder and trolley right. And W 1 is the load transferred to gantry, gantry from each wheel. So, this is A we can say and W 1 which is the load transferred to gantry from each wheel this is W t. So, the W 1 what is means in terms of reaction what is coming that. So, load transfer to gantry from each wheel W 1 can be found from here right W t into B minus A by B into half because of two side it is right. Now, the weight transfer to girder due to crane if we say W 2 that will become 
wc by 4 because 4 wheels each at one end. So, it will be divided by 4. So, wc by 4 w 2 will become w c by 4. So, the total load on each wheel will become w is equal to w 1 plus w 2 right. So, total vertical load can be found in this way w 1 plus w 2 that means w 1 is w t into b minus a by 2 b and w 2 is w c by 4. So, from this expression we can find out the total load on each wheel right. Next what we will do increase maximum load by 25 percent to account for impact load. So, 25 percent or some other percentage also as per the coral provisions we have to increase. Generally we use to increase 25 percent most of the cases it arises like this right. Next calculate maximum bending moment due to vertical load right. A gantry girder is subjected to moving loads in the form of two concentrated loads from wheel spaced at a fixed distance b. So, maximum shear how it will develop if we see that if this is the gantry girder space means two gantry girders are here with a span of say l right. Then one wheel if it is placed here another wheel if it is placed here. So, theoretically if it is like this then we can find out the maximum shear force. So, this we can say position for maximum shear force ok and for maximum bending moment how do we find out? Say if this is the span length L, then we know from theory of structure you must have seen that if this is the center distance means L by 2, this is L by 2, right? Then the load has to be placed in such a way that it should be means if this is w, if this is w means the C g of the wheel load means C g of the two constant load and C g of the um, so C g of the wheel load will be here right. So, this will be b by 2. So, C g of the center will be at the mid position of the C g of the wheel. That means, if this is b by 2, then this will become b by 4 and this will become b by 4. So, in this way the maximum moment will develop right. Position for maximum bending moment right. So, where the maximum bending moment is happening? if the position is something like this. That means, if the fix means if the wheels are spaced at a distance of b, then from c g of the span to one wheel load distance should be b by 4 right. So, in this way we can find out the maximum bending moment right. So, when we are calculating the maximum moment, what we will do that calculate maximum bending moment say m x 1 in the garter due to wheel load of w is separated by a wheel base b by proper placement. Now, if we will see that if b is less than 0.586 l b means this wheel base length right. If b is less than 0.586 l place one of the wheel at b by 4 from the center of the gantry girder. So, place here b by 4 from b by 4 from the center of the gantry girder one load has to be placed right. If b is less than 0.586 l 
and if b is greater than 0.586L, place one of the wheel at the mid span to get the maximum moment. Place one of the wheel at the mid span to get the maximum moment if b is 0.586L. That you can calculate at your own from theory of from the knowledge of theory of structure you know that how the maximum moment develops if two concentrated load moves right from influence line diagram you must have seen ok. Now, another load is the self weight and here you may assume the self weight as w 1 is equal to 2 w by 250 kilometer per meter and weight of the roll rail say may be 0.3 kilometer per meter these are some standard you can value you can use 2 w by 250 kilometer per meter and w 2 as 0.3 kilometer per meter for the weight of the rail right. So, the total UDL will be how much the w if we denote will be w 1 plus w 2 right. So, total UDL will be this one and total moment vertical moment bending moment will become w x square by 8 that is at the middle at the center of the span the maximum bending moment will occur that is w l square by 8 right. Then we will find out the total bending moment m x is equal to m x 1 plus m x 2 m x 1 due to the here for this one and m x 2 due to the self weight and other weight right. So, finally, we can find out in this way the maximum bending moment. Next what we will do? Next step 3. In step 3, we will select a suitable section right. So, how to select? To start with, we will find out means we will consider the permissible bending stress as 0.66 FY. That means, we will consider sigma B T. Then we may increase little high to be in safer side because we do not know what will be the value of sigma B C, right. So, take sigma B T is equal to 0.66 FY, then we can find out Z section modulus which will be M X by sigma B T, right. Then we can select an I section or some other sections also you can select having Z about 10 to 20 percent more than the above value. In fact, we can use two channel section also or as per the requirement we can use some built up section also. I am not going into complicated one, I am not going just for the sake of simplicity let us assume the I section on the basis of which we will design the country gutter right. Now, select a channel section with a depth of 50 mm more than width of flange of I section. Why? Because if I section is there, then if you provide a channel section, it has to be means this depth has to be more than the flange of I section, right. So, around 50 mm more it has to be. So, we will select the channel section in such a way that the channel section depth will be at least 50 mm more than the width of the flange of the I section just to accommodate it right. Now, we will calculate in step 4 the neutral axis and the moment of inertia of the combined section right. Find the neutral axis depth of the combined section and then the value of I x. So, in step 4 what we will do? We will find out the neutral axis depth of the combined section and then the moment of inertia about x, di x direction of the combined section right. Then in step 5 what we will do? Check for bending tensile stress. So, we will calculate the maximum developed bending tensile stress due to vertical loading and check with the permissible values right. So, sigma B t calculated has to be less than sigma B t means 0 0.66 F y right. So, for vertical 
um, loading, we have to check whether the maximum stresses developed due to bending moment in ten, I mean maximum tensile stresses which should be less than 0.66 Fy. So, that we have to check for the combined section. Next what we will do? Next we will check for bending compressive stress. Tensile stress is over now, we will check for the compressive stress due to bending. right? So, for this what we will do? We will first find out the critical bending stress FCB. The formula is given in the IS code IS 800 1984. So, from that we can find out FCB. Then we will find the permissible compressive stress sigma BC for the above value and given value of Fy. Right? So, sigma BC can be found from FCB and Fy. From this we can find out. Right? Then what we will do? Check for bending compressive stress due to vertical load. So, sigma BC cal vertical load will become this one M x by I x into Y c, where Y c is the distance from neutral axis to the compressive means extreme compressive flange right and it should become less than or equal to sigma BC which has been calculated here right. So, in this way we will check for bending compressive stress. Next step 7. In step 7 what we will do? We will calculate the bending moment due to horizontal load. Calculate bending moment due to horizontal load. Okay. So, for vertical load we have already calculated and we have checked it is ok. Right? Now, we will calculate the bending moment due to horizontal load. So, calculate transverse horizontal load as per the coral provision. Now, so F H will become 10 percent of the weight of the crab and the lifting weight. Right? 10 percent of the weight of crab and the lifting weight and therefore, the wheel load will become W H will become F H by 2, wheel load will become F H by 2. And now, placement of the wheel load for horizontal bending will be similar to that of vertical load. So, placement of the wheel load where we will place similar to that where we have placed for vertical load, because for this also the maximum bending moment will be developed and that same position maximum shear force also will be developed same position where the maximum shear force due to vertical load has developed. So, from that we can find out simply this m y is equal to m x 1 into w h by w right because simply we, we can linearly interpolate right m y will become m x 1 and m x 1 has developed due to this w. So, due to w h how much it will develop we can find out from this ratio right. So, this bending moment will be registered by compressing flange only this bending moment developed due to horizontal load and therefore, this stress has to be registered by the compression plane only right. So, what we will do? We will calculate compressive stress due to horizontal loading in the compression flange right. So, what we will do? First we will find out moment of inertia of the compression flange, moment of inertia of the compression plane that means, suppose this is the I section and this is the neutral axis depth. So, here we have one another channel section. So, we have provided here right. So, now this will be the compression flange. So, and I y of compression flange, I y of compression flange will become I x x of channel right, because I y y means here. So, this will become for this channel I x x right plus I y of beam half of that right. So, in this way we can find out the moment of inertia of the compressive flange of channel section. Then we will calculate compressive stress due to horizontal bending that is sigma B c cal h we are denoting as sigma B c 
calculated due to horizontal loading sigma bc cal h. So, sigma bc cal h will become m x by i y c f into x i y c f means this one right. So, in this way we can find out the compressive stress due to horizontal load right. Now, x is the maximum fiber distance that will become h c by 2 maximum fiber distance which will become h c by 2 right. Next check for maximum bending stress. So, check for maximum bending stress means we will check for the combined means combined means combined load of horizontal and vertical right. So, we have calculated only the sigma vesical vertical and sigma vesical horizontal. So, if we sum up it has to be less than 1.1 of sigma bc as codal provision has told that the permissible stress can be increased 10 percent more permissible stress can be increased 10 percent in case of combination of horizontal and vertical load. So, the stress developed due to vertical load and horizontal load has been summed up then has been checked which should be less than 1.1 of sigma bc that means 10 percent extra of sigma bc right and this sig this uh, sigma bc has been calculated in step 6 right and in step 10 what we will do calculate stress due to longitudinal force calculate stress due to longitudinal force. So, here what we will do? We will find out the horizontal longitudinal force along the rail right. Horizontal longitudinal force along the rail which we have denoted as F L H and as per codal provision it will be 5 percent of the total wheel load 5 percent of total wheel load total wheel load means 2 w right and if the height of the rail is denoted h r then we can find out the bending moment m l h as f l h into h r plus y c f l h what is f l h f l h we have told that horizontal longitudinal force horizontal longitudinal force now, because of this horizontal longitudinal force bending moment will develop which has been denoted as m l h horizontal longitudinal moment. So, horizontal longitudinal moment will become f l h into h r plus y c right where h r is the height of the rail and y c what is y c y c is the distance between the neutral axis to the compressive flange say if I draw here say suppose this is neutral axis I am not drawing whole thing and this is the I section which is placed another channel section right. So, this will become right. So, y c will become this one and then height of the rail is there ok this is h r and this is h c. Therefore, the moment in horizontal longitudinal direction will become this one and then stress in the horizontal direction will become the summation of these two f l h by a this is direct stress and then m l h by z l right. F L H by A plus M L H by J L and it will be seen that this is very small in general it will become very small because F L H is very small that 5 percent only we are going to take. So, because of that very small load so M L H will be also small and F L H also will be small and when we are going to find out the stress we will see 
finally, the stress will become very small. Right? However, we have to check. Now, we will go for step 11 that is check for shear stress, check for shear stress. So, so far we have checked for bending stress, means stresses coming due to bending, stresses in terms of tensile stress and in terms of compressive stress developed due to bending and bending again developed due to horizontal and also due to vertical load. Major force is coming due to vertical load and horizontal load is coming due to some percentage, some percentage is coming horizontal thrust as a horizontal thrust. So, for that we have checked, it means we have checked individually for the vertical load and we have checked combinedly for the vertical load and horizontal load, right. So, those things we are doing, we have done. Now, all the means all sort of check in terms of bending stress has been done. Now, we will go for the shear, shear stress. So, what we will do? We will find shear force V 1 due to wheel load and we will add say 25 percent as impact factor. As per the coral provision, we have to add some percentage of load for impact factor as we have done in case of moment also. So, we can find out shear V 1, this is because of wheel load. So, V 1 is coming because of wheel load, right, wheel load and shear force V 2 is coming due to dead load, dead load means dead load due to rail and others, self weight is there. So, two type of shear force is coming. In fact, we have seen in case of moment also two type of moment is coming due to wheel load and due to dead load uh, which includes self weight, right. So, now the total shear force will become V 1 plus V 2. So, finally, the total shear force we can find out as V 1 plus V 2. Remember, when we are going to calculate this V 1 we have to see that when the maximum shear force will develop, when the maximum shear force will develop, right. The maximum shear force as we know theoretically when one of the wheel will be placed at the support, then it will be maximum, right. So, we have to see from practical point of view at what place it is the closest, means wheel will be closest because wheel will be like this. So, when we are going to say calculate the shear force suppose here the gantry girder is there. So, what will be? So, this will be the minimum distance we have to leave. So, this position will be the sorry this will come here. So, in that way wherever the wheel is placed that will be that means it will be like this say if I redraw it will be like this. So, this is gantry and right something like this. Okay. So, in this way we have to see and we will see if, if it can come here fine means maximum load where it is coming means closest distance from gantry we have to see. Right. So, in this way we can find out V 1 and V 2 and then total shear force V, right. Now, check for this tau V cal means shear stress developed that will become V by H into T w. T w is the thickness of wave, H is the total height means the height of the girder right and it has to be less than 0.4 FY as per the total provision as you know average shear stress has to be less than 0.4 FY right. We have learned earlier lectures in earlier lectures we have learned right. So, this has to check. Now, if it is not okay then again we have to redesign 
redesign means we have to increase the section and we have to start from the step 1 itself or step 2 step 3 itself means how to find out all the details then we have to find out the maximum bending moment due to vertical load maximum bending moment due to horizontal load then combination of that then again this. So, whole steps we have to again make it right. Then next step is so if it is ok what we will do we will go for design of riveted joint. So, we will go for riveted joint means joint right. So, in case of riveted joint what we will do we will calculate the intensity of shear stress per unit length calculate the intensity of shear stress per unit length that will become this q is equal to v by i x into a f c into y 1 bar q is the intensity of shear stress per unit length q is the intensity of shear stress per unit length and b is the shear force and a f c is the area of cross section of the flange of channel remember a f c is the area of cross section of the flange of the channel that means when i section is there we know for channel channel we are going to provide so the area of the flange of the channel so a f c in this way we can find out now what is y 1 bar that is distance of the c g of the flange of channel from neutral axis distance of the c g of the flange of channel from the neutral axis and i x is the moment of inertia of the built up section means combined section i x i x is the moment of inertia of the combined section. So, in this way we can find out the value of q where q is the intensity of shear stress per unit length. So, the moment we get the value of q we can find out the rivet means rivet details say if we use two rows of rivets having a rivet value of r then we can find out the pitch of the rivet from this formula p is equal to 2 r by q right where r is the rivet value and if n number of rivets are pro means n number of rows are provided then we can write n r by q p will become n r by q let us make generalized e when n number of rows of rivets are used with a rivet value of r right and this has to be less than 12 t w c where t w c is thickness of wave of channel t w c is the thickness of wave of the channel. So, pitch p has to be checked that whether it is less than 12 T w c or not. Also, it has to be checked through this that 12 T f where T f is the thickness of flange of beam, thickness of the flange of beam. So, it has the pitch has to be less than 12 T w c and it has to be T f. So, in this way we can find out the pitch of the rivet. So, in this way step by step we can design a gantry gutter. In next class, we will go through one workout example following these steps. So, with this I like to conclude today's lecture on gantry gutter. Thank you very much.